that's the bridge deck. Well, it's not done yet, but it's the beginning of it. I'm putting little clips in. Just a clip, just a piece of cut off angle iron, or angle, I guess I should say. And I just, I'm putting them in here like that, just to make it solid. I spent uh, yesterday afternoon, or part of it anyway, notching these uh, I-beam shapes, S-beam shapes, they're really S-beams, as opposed to wide flange beams, which are different. But uh, anyway, these are going to be the bracing for the deck, and I notched them all, and I put these little stools, or spacers, in, so that when this sits there, let's see if I can get that to go in with one hand. When that sits in there, it sits flush with the top, and it has something to rest on. So that gets glued, and. There's really not much to glue at the end. That's where the little um, angles come in, the little clips come in. So I'll be putting at least one clip at every one. I'm gluing the, the bottom in this time, and then I'll come around and I'll flip it over and I'll put the top in. If you're not subscribed, how about subscribing? It, it's nice if you give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. Thank you, and I'll see you in a minute. Judging from some of the comments that uh, I'm getting on uh, various social media, I want to clarify a few things about this building of the bridge. 
here's the uh, here's where I am right now. I have this this truss is almost completed. I think I have enough material to build both trusses. And of course the trusses stiffen. Um, this, this actually would probably be almost strong enough to support the three trains that it's going to see at the same time. But there would be some deflection, in other words, sag. So the truss will actually make it a lot stiffer. And you can already feel uh, how much stiffer it is over here. Now you see it deflecting out. Uh, that'll be stabilized because they'll be bracing from one uh, truss to the other. And I may even put some outriggers out further and brace diagonally down. I can't brace this way because it would block the trains, but I can I can put uh, I can run a beam out wider than the deck and uh, do some diagonals up. I, we'll see what what I get into when uh, when we get there. But uh, the drawing, let's talk about the drawing for a minute. This is a full-size drawing. It could be done, you could accomplish the same thing by drawing, a, making a scale drawing. I just have the convenience of being able to make it full-sized. So it, it makes it more accurate, more easily I needed accurate. a compass to build this model. It's kind of unusual, and here's why. But it allows, the reason I needed it on this drawing is I wanted to bisect these angles. In other words, I wanted to know what was halfway between the two angles. I don't need to know what this angle actually is. I just need to know what halfway between them is because that's where I want to put the joint. This joint, and this joint, and this joint. I wanted to know what that angle was so that I could uh, I could make that cut and join those together and then I put a plate on it to hold them, to strengthen it. And also the length of the pieces. I need to know the length of the pieces. And because it's full size, I can actually lay the pieces on this drawing and um, they match, as you can see. Learning how to make a scale drawing, it's not that hard. There are certain basic understandings you need. Tools you need for fabrication. I use these little machinist's squares on the left. Next to it, going to the right, are cutters, flush cutters. I use them for cutting sprues and, you know, various plastic cutting exercises, not for metal. And then, of course, the scalpel and then sanding sticks. Boomer Dioramas taught me this, that the, these sanding sticks are, are the best way to sand. I used to use files. Well, trouble with files is you can't lay it on the table, move it back and forth and get a square, a square sand. Um, so you always round things off. Anyway, those things work great. And then, uh, you know, uh, just a regular steel ruler, a pair of scissors, and my uh, calipers there that, that reads in hundreds. I, I use those quite a bit, actually. Then, of course, my magnifying glasses, those are there. <laughs> that's because I can't see anything. And that's pretty much the whole uh, fleet of tools it takes to fabricate plastic. It, it's pretty simple stuff. How the drawing is useful. Okay, so I want to make this piece. The piece that goes from here to here. And it is, on the model, it is this. Now this is too close to you. I'm going to turn it this way. It is this piece right here. It goes from here to here. And it changes angle, so there's a joint right there. And I need to cut that angle. So 
So how do I do it? Well, because my drawing is full sized, I can lay the piece I'm going to cut right there. And I've already bisected the angle with my compass. There's no magic there. Um, you can look up how to bisect an angle with a compass. And I'm going to mark it. So now I know where to cut it. I'm going to cut it on that line. I'm not on the line. I'm a little short of the line. So I will trim that. That's just in case I didn't get this cut exactly right. Which happens. Here's my piece. It goes right there. Touch the glue to it, which tacks it top and bottom. When I'm satisfied, oops, it's in the right place. Then I flood it and weld it solid. There, that's a, a truss done on one side. Once the trusses are done, then there is lots of small details that need to be added to the model to make it interesting. I mean, to make it interesting when you bear down and get down into the nitty gritty. I want the details, I want it to be attractive from a distance and then I want it, as you look deeper and deeper into it, to see more and more detail. That's the goal anyway. I just want to tell you that this bridge build has been the most interesting and fun project I've done for a long time. Um, I'm having a ball with it. Thanks for watching. Oh, and I shaved my beard. You probably noticed that. Um, hey, give me a thumbs up. Thanks. See you soon. Bye-bye.